you watch this documentary first. Um, and I knew I would at some point. I just had to prep myself because I'm a huge Notre Dame fan. Um, and this was a proud time because this was the time that, you know, the 49ers in the NFL went to the Super Bowl. Notre Dame fight. And Irish went to the national championship. But leading up to all of that was a story of Manti Teo. Um, and man, that guy was a monster on the field. He was great. He What he did for that defense and, and to bring the program back to the national dominance that it was for a while, um, especially for that senior year that he came back for, what a hell of a senior year. But what we didn't know was what was happening in the background. Right. Now, you watch the documentary. Um, his girlfriend, um, that turns out, the girlfriend that never was. <laughs> I yeah. mean, they had everything from the tail in. Uh, even, even I had to make fun of it and just go, hey, you know what? I get it. But, you know, <laughs> take the empty picture. Uh, <laughs> I remember that on social. Like, I feel so bad, but I got to do it. Uh, but, you know, what were your thoughts when you watched this documentary? Because, again, this wasn't for, uh, in the forefront for you right. and it didn't hit home for you. But you do remember this time period. I remember it very well because it was so funny. Right. Mm. I mean, it was at first it was like sad because you you know, you think about his grandmother dying and then apparently his girlfriend dying. And now he's, you know, um, highest man candidate going to the national championship. It was like this really great story that everybody really yeah. bought into. And you, it, you you look at the David and Goliath. Right. You mm -hmm. know, Goliath being Bama. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame was about to go up against Bama mm -hmm. in the national championship. So this was going to be huge. Then to find out. She didn't exist. I'm like, how the hell mm -hmm. did that happen? You know, and I remember thinking it, but then life moved on and you just made fun of it and joked about it. So watching the documentary, I was curious, like, okay, I need to understand how it got to that point. And I still don't understand how it got to that <laughs> Why? point. Well, so I get it. Back then, you know, catfishing really wasn't as, as popular as it is now. So you get a friend request on Facebook from somebody. Now, the girl that friended him, he saw that she was friends with other people and that were friends of his and family members, mm -hmm. one of his cousins. He's like, hey, do you know so-and-so? And he's like, cousin was like, yeah, I know her. We talked a couple times, messaged, talked on the phone, but nothing ever happened. So he thinks this person's real. Get right. It. Now you understand why. Right. So I, I totally get that. I mean, I, the, the scam that this person did was really good. Very um, elaborate, yeah. And it just started out as just kind of friends, just kind of, you know, BS. And mm -hmm. then eventually it evolved. The part that I don't get is how do you let it evolve to that level of emotional connection with someone you've never physically seen in person or video chatted with? I think that kind of, okay. I, I question that a lot too. Like, how do you have a girlfriend that you've never met? And that's because the society that we live in, we grew up in is your girlfriend, you're with your girl. I, I never... Here's the thing about this. Me in college couldn't do long distance. I knew too many I knew too many girls in long distance relationships who were not faithful. There was no way I would have been in a long yes, distance relationship. Yes, I know relationship. what you mean. <laughs> Some of the long distance was just on the other side of town. It wasn't like they were out of the city. <laughs> it wasn't even long distance, it was just distance. They just didn't live on campus. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, understanding that for him, though, He's a fish out of water in Notre Dame, right? And he's alone there in, in that space. And here's somebody who shares his, his background, his cultural background. Um, this, it's easy for him to latch on. And then he's kind of, he's kind of naive. When you look, he's a nice guy. At the end of the day, one of the things I think this documentary kind of showed, he's a nice guy. He was yeah. young, naive, nice. And that was the problem. Because he would, if he was white, we would have called him Tim Tebow. True. He was a good, clean, wholesome kid. Um, uh, Mormon, right? Devout Mormon, really into mm -hmm. his religion. So I, I totally yes. get all that. Hell, about chose him. Notre Still. Dame because of because of his his faith. Think about that. He was he wanted to go to USC. Was ready to commit to USC, and said, "God, show me the way. If this is the right decision." If not, then show me where I need to go. Right. And somebody else told him, well, I thought you'd just go to Notre Dame. And right. so he changed his mind just because he felt that's what God was telling him to do. Right. 
But still, you fall for this person that you've never seen. Yeah. And never even video chatted with. Every time you try to video chat, something goes wrong. And so if all those are red flags that this is bullshit. Now, let's just say you're still dealing with this and you get the call that she's in the hospital. Y'all been together now a year and some change. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you just got on a plane and went, what hospital you had? I'm on my way. See, Notre Dame doesn't play, pay its uh, players like Bama does. If he was at Bama, he would have been able to just hop on the plane and buy his own ticket and get there. In Notre Dame, you actually go there for an education. So Bullshit. That, Somebody could maybe have gotten a plane Maybe ticket. if he went to Texas, you know, the Longhorns probably pay their players too. So, I mean, therefore, he would have Somebody could have got him a plane ticket. An alumni could have bought him a plane ticket. <laughs> Southwest can fly from there to wherever is, you know, California. So... It, it, it's just crazy how it all got to that point. Now, uh, to me, what the documentary really exposed is how sick and twisted yes. um, the Renaya. person was. I forget his yeah. name, but... Renaya. How, Renaya. Yeah, how sick and twisted Renaya is because not only were you messing with Manti's head, you also talked to his parents. Yes. And like you're getting the whole family wrapped up in this and the parents are trying to help console your family member because they think mm -hmm. that, you know, the girlfriend died. All that was big. Now, kudos for Manti being able to forgive. I couldn't. I'm a Scorpio. I couldn't forgive you. And Hell someone's no. ass is going to have to get kicked before I can even like, think about it. Yeah, you forgive. deserve to die, and I hope you're burning hell. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that, the fact that this joker has the nerve to try to uh, you know nobody would hire me I couldn't put my name down you shouldn't be hired are you kidding you mess with this guy's head not even the fact that he was um, the big superstar but just the fact that you're sick enough to do this to somebody and you don't know what's going on with him that day so have no idea that his grandmother just died but to even just kill her off um, his girlfriend. It just so happened to be the perfect storm was on the same day, right? And that's that's the crazy thing because it, it's, it sounds like such a movie that it happened on the same day. It really was just the perfect storm. It's like something's off. Well, let me just end this real quick. And it, I don't think it was an end this real quick. I think it really was, well, I need to get your attention or something. I'm going to make you pay for, for just shutting me out. And so that was almost like killer off for that. And then next thing you do after that is, hey, it's me. I'm alive. Why? Right. That's so sick and demented. That it's, you're right. There is no forgiveness for this. Absolutely right. not. I couldn't forgive. Um, and kudos to to Manti for saying I forgive you. Um, and I I, I understand because what you've done to him. First of all, you cost him millions of dollars because he was a guaranteed top ten pick, regardless. Guaranteed. His head was so messed up in that national championship that at least the game wouldn't have been 42 to 14. At least could have been 21 14. It would have been a little better. We, we, we would have stopped them a couple of times. I don't know if we would have beat Alabama, but we could have, yeah. we could at least made it a fight. Shut up. We could have at least made it a fight. <laughs> but the, at, so you cost this man millions of dollars by his draft position when he didn't even get drafted in the first round. Just the fact that he didn't get drafted in the first round cost him millions. He would have been a top five, top 10 pick regardless, right? But not only that, he has no trust in people anymore because of all the ridicule he got because of what you did to him. He had, the, it was so heartbreaking to hear him. And seeing him look, I mean, because he looks so different now than, than then, right? And yeah. you see this manly man in front of you again, and now he's just like, but I don't trust people. I, I, I can't, and I've got to really, I had to work on myself to realize that, no, this person is not just saying it as a joke. They actually... This is somebody who actually likes me for me. Mm -hmm. That shit's never going to go away for him. No, it's not. But you still have to say, yeah, this person did something to Manti that was really jacked up. Mm -hmm. But he allowed it to happen, too. And so there's two sides to that. He chose to be in a relationship with somebody that he's never physically seen or in any form, video mm -hmm. or anything. He chose that. So he put himself in this situation. Now, what made him even look worse, and I don't even know what he could have done differently. Once he realized that, okay, this is bullshit, this person's not dead, you're at the Heisman deal, still saying this person, you know, your girlfriend died, and all that, when you know, oh, that's not true. So now it makes him look even worse, like he's involved it in it. It does. You know? It, it does. But I don't know what he could have said. He could have, like, called a press conference, hey, I just got word. That apparently my girlfriend didn't die. I think I've been getting scammed by somebody. 
He didn't know that he was, and, and that's the problem. He himself was still, he was still trying to figure out, according to what this, this documentary said, he was still trying to figure out, okay, well, well, what's what and what's real, what's not, right? And, but I will give him the credit. He told his parents, he went back to school, and he told the athletic director. So Jack Swarbrick, now it's Notre Dame. They are that big institution that they're going to go dig in. They're going to try and find out, right? And he did what he was supposed to do. He went and told the, he told the people of power in his life, his parents, and then he t- and it's, it wasn't until um, the uncle was the, the lawyer was kind that he goes, "Oh no, you've been catfished. That's what that is." <laughs> now then, at that moment, even though he said, "I still didn't get the concept of that," like he's not like you and I. We're skeptics. We're not going to believe shit. <laughs> <laughs> and and even but even he tried. But here's here's the confusing part for him. He didn't either. He goes, I'm not going to believe anything until you send me this. A picture of you do, with, with these letters on it, today's date, and doing my symbol that I do every time. And she okay. provided it. What are you going to do at, at that point? You're like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to be thinking? You should be thinking that this is not a live video of a person. It's just a picture that could have been Photoshopped, could have been anything. And then who's this other girl that... Uh, gets this phone call from someone she doesn't really know, and they ask her to send a picture doing this. She's like, "Okay, sure, I'll do it." Because they said it was for a sick kid, and everybody's doing it just to. It's I get it, no. but you know what? It's it's like if somebody said, "My sick puppy likes to see people do the peace symbol," you probably would have sent a picture too, because you know how you love dogs. If you called me and said that, yes, because <laughs> I know you. <laughs> But someone I don't really know out the blue, hey, Trojans, no, I'm not doing that. I don't, I don't know First you. First of all. I, I don't know this person. If I call you and tell you it's for a sick puppy, you know it's a sick joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to get you a puppy one day. We're going to turn you around. You're going to be a dog lover. Hey, first of all, pause. <laughs> yeah, they're cute paws. I'm going to get you a puppy. You're going to be a dog lover one day. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded really wild as hell. <laughs> you know, it was a great documentary, though. I will say that um, I enjoyed enjoyed watching. I think the whole Untold series, I think, is pretty dope. Um, Malice at the Palace was the first one I saw. I, um, I thought that was dope. I watched the end. After I finished the Manti tale, I'm like, you know, I'm such a binge watcher, right? Like, if... And as soon as I finished watching something, I'm like, all right, what else I got to watch now? And so I watched the Anne one, which is really interesting as well, too. So you get a chance, check them out. They're all on uh, Netflix, but pretty dope. Um, that that story is just still sad to me um, just because the whole, you really fuck with somebody's life in that case. Yeah, totally did. But that person needs their ass whooped. <laughs> yes. And look, Manti, should, you see, this is how you know Manti is, is, is such a peaceful, God-loving man. Because if he was a brother on that team, he'd have been like, give me five minutes. I just need five minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Even in the Bible, sometimes God shows his wrath. <laughs> some, some people need it. <laughs> Damn, you would have stoned him. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd have brought the flood. Uh-uh, we're going to just, just wipe this whole area out. <laughs> we're going to put you in the closet, and then now here comes the locust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 